pushed two years ago, 2012. And I actually just started telling people the true story behind why I wrote it. Like, yeah, I write my rats because it's real to me, but I also wrote it because in 2012, I contemplated suicide. Like, for real, right? That's not something we talk about in the black community. It's not something we talk about, period. I don't even know why folks talk about it. You know, these thoughts are forbidden. They are. They're very devilish and satanic. Who would want to take their own life? I was at a place in my life where I had already met the Lord, have already began to develop a relationship with Jesus Christ, and I was in the season of maturing and growing in the Word, and I didn't know that in that season that God would have his face for me that season. So I didn't feel him, I didn't hear him, I felt hopeless, and there was a voice in my head telling me that God wasn't real, which I didn't believe, but it was adamant, God is real. Yeah, you've been overseas. That was a coincidence. Everything you've ever done was a coincidence. There is no God. There is no purpose to life. This is it. This is the greatest it's going to get. And I'm like, well, this is the way life is. Now, I just don't want to live. And I just would cry out to the Lord, like, God, stop these thoughts, Lord. Where are you? I remember when. I heard you clearly. I remember when you gave me direction. I remember when you told me to do things. And like, now this voice saying, you're not real. Like, where are you, Lord? And the Lord, being as faithful as he is, of course, he sends people, ministers, and different type of people to speak into your life, to speak over you without even knowing. And um, my mother, I told my mother, I was like, Ma, I'm 23 years old at the time. Like, Ma, I don't even want to live no more. And she's like, why? Like, out of my whole family, I'm like one of the first to graduate from high school. One of the first to go to college, one of the first to go overseas, the only to go overseas, all these things. And so they looking at me like I'm the child from the family that's gonna really like make something of myself and make some change in the world and change my family at the same time. And I'm like, I don't even wanna live. It was two years ago. <sighs> and so my mom's like, Jesse, why you feel that way? Why why are you speaking like that? I'm like, cuz like like, what's the purpose, Ma? Like, I've done everything I feel like I'm supposed to do. I don't, if there ain't no purpose, that I just want to be with God. Period. What's the point? I, I'm like, I love y'all, but I just rather be with God. That was just how I felt. And um, my mother had talked to my stepfather, who was incarcerated for 32 years, for a crime he didn't commit. And he, he was released in 2006. And he told me, he, you know, I know you're going through some things, but I just want to tell you something. He talked about all the racism he experienced in prison. How they took 32 years of his life from him that he can never get back. He old man now. And he said, my 32 years of being incarcerated for a crime that I did not commit, not once did I consider killing myself. And so I'm 23, talking to my elder, who's spent 32 years, that's more life than I've ever been on earth, in prison for a crime he didn't commit. How did I even have these thoughts? And so I did a lot of praying. But I believe that the spirit of suicide is a spirit. I believe that spirit of depression is a spirit. I feel like any yeah, spirit of addiction. These are spiritual things. The Bible says that we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but principality, spiritual wickedness, and high places. So even though, like when I was your age, I wasn't thinking about God, I wasn't looking for God, and I wasn't even sure if I believed He was real. Like I knew He was real because my grandma and him, right? When you get older, you're going to meet God for yourself, hopefully. That's the plan. Because you don't need nobody else's testimony, you need your own. Because it's going to be like, because I know you transform my life. I met the Lord like in this Holy Spirit encounter without expecting me in 2009. And um, I felt like after that moment, like I know God is real. Like I'm hearing God tell me exactly what to do and I'm doing it and I'm watching how things is happening. Like I'm discerning, I'm seeking first aid, the kingdom of God and all these things should be added at 21 years old without having a college degree. God blessed me to, come, uh, to become a high school teacher. I was taking creative writing on faculty, 
at an all girls high school teaching juniors and seniors. My students, like, they were 16, 17, and 18. So, of course, they like, I'm young, I'm 21, so they're challenging me and stuff. But I'm still, you know, like a, you know, authority or whatever. So I'm just like, they have, you know, have smart attic remarks. And I'll be like, look, y'all. And I say how I feel. They're like, well, that's just your opinion. I'm like, well, guess what? I'm somebody who happens to get paid for my opinion. I don't have a degree to why, but I'm to be your teacher. Right? You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you gotta let them know. But these young ladies are all my little sisters now. Now they're 21 and 22. Some of them have babies. Some of them are still in college. Some of them dropped out. Some of them I haven't heard from. But I know they got something into their life for a reason. Like, I never wanted to be a teacher, a role model, a positive person. Like, all the things that people say about me, that's not something I wanted to be. I just wanted to rap. I was born on the west side of Chicago, came up on the south side, came up on the north side, raised in foster care for four and a half years. All my life, I've been nomadic. I've moved, 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 moved. Home to me is where my heart is. You know what I'm saying? So I wrote Push. Three days after I contemplated suicide, my producer had something to beat. And all my friends back home and in my community, like they admired me, my, my, my drive. Like I was the first person in my crew to like dream big. Like I never saw things small, ever. God always had the big dreams. Always BET, MTV. I pictured F LA, New York. I always pictured big things. And everything, and God, by God's grace, the things that I've always foreseen has always come to pass. Not when I expected them to, or maybe not how I expected them to come to pass, but I promise God, I remember I had to be like 13, 14, saying that I wanted to intern at a record label in New York, um, just so I could get on the inside and see what it's really like to be in the music business. At 19, I'm in New York City, living in Harlem, working at Warner Brothers Records. Interning there, we had just signed with Khalifa. I was like a super intern, doing a whole bunch of stuff with the industry. 08, I was at the VMAs, MTV Video Music Awards in LA. 2011, been to the Grammys. Like, all the things I wanted to see, I've seen. But I still felt empty after doing it. I still didn't feel like a purpose was being served. So by the time 2012 come, I didn't seen it all. I didn't been to Europe. I didn't live in New York, I didn't work in the label, I didn't been to award shows, but I'm still not where I want to be in life. I don't even know where I want to be in life, but I just know that this right here where I was at ain't it. So, the enemy comes when you're very weak. When you're very weak, that's what saying comes. Like when Jesus was um, fasting for 40 days and he began to tempt them, turn those rocks into food, jump off, God will save you, do this, do that. Why are you talking to me, dude? I'm just trying to focus. I'm a human being. I haven't had anything to drink or eat in 40 days. Why are you tempting me? You know what I'm saying? But that's what the enemy does. So my producer sends me the track, and I'm like, it's okay, let's make it. And it made me cry. Because how am I going to make it?